Greetings and welcome to Creative Briefing, fellow creatives. Creative Briefing is a ad hoc live show semi-regularly streamed across the internet thanks to Facebook's live streaming algorithms and um, here I take a sometimes daily look at the different aspects of creativity and the many shapes and sizes in which it comes, hopefully to inspire and motivate and encourage um, those creatives among us to explore a different side of creativity one that they may not have thought of playing with yet or if you're one of those people who thinks oh, i'm not creative maybe you can explore your inner creativity and i think everyone has it within them that's what we are as humans it's uh how we've communicated since we were sleeping on the floors of a cave um so uh i think it's a good time the tools are, are, are there for everyone, the technology is there for everyone to use and um, I think with social media there's definitely a, an avenue to put your creativity out there as opposed to just selfies of you eating lunch, right? You know who you are. Anyway, so it might be music of one form or another. It might be animation, it might be graphic design, video editing, whatever I feel like talking about. I try and mix it up, keep it a little bit varied. Uh, so there's something for everyone. You may already be an expert in a given field, but move along and come back tomorrow or just come along for the ride and um, enjoy enjoy the experience um maybe chip in with some comments or some feedback or some extra tips or bonus tips or tricks of your own that you know uh you may like to share with fellow viewers so um today i'm gonna look at um let's see where we's at i'm gonna look at uh coloring black and white liner i teach art and music and stuff to to students um who in the old days used to come to my house but now i try and do it over the uh internet with zoom along with uh many many other peoples and a lot of uh, a lot of my at least my my kid young adult students you know are into comic art they want to learn how to draw comics want to learn how to color comics so um i thought i'd you know dip into that today very briefly again these are short little uh, bite-sized lessons to get you inspired to explore you know a subject on your own but this is a um a cover to a comic skin and earth it's a really great um really great little series it's written by this musician lights she's a, a musical artist as well as a, a writer and, a, and a, a sort of comic artist although i'm not sure if she illustrates it herself but um she definitely definitely writes it but this was like a, a fan cover sort of contest thing so everyone can go to like skin and earth website and download this same image so we can all sort of play along together that's what i thought would be a good good example um i'll get into maybe in a later episode uh, later in the week or next week we can look into creating black and white line art and then getting that into photoshop um but for now i thought just to get started we'll deal with some color and um just some very sort of quick tips and techniques that i've developed over the years and um for being sort of efficient in photoshop and and making things look beautiful really um not necessarily lifelike we're not creating um artistic master masterpieces here we're trying to uh, accentuate what the line artist has already done um so yeah let's jump straight in and see where we are control five Let's go full screen. Let's go there. Okay, so we're in a full screen. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the uh, Photoshop UI. So I've downloaded this. It's a JPEG. Um, downloaded from the Skin and Earth um, website, as I said. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is set up my user interface in Photoshop so that it's good for this particular task. So I've got my color palette down here, I've got my layers. We, we tend to get quite a few layers, so I like to have a lot of screen real estate given towards the layers palette. Um, and I have all my other sort of palettes here, with, with, you know, oops, if I, uh, if I want to get to them if I need to, but for the most part, I don't really need these for this. But I do need color. Uh, swatches are there, which is handy. Um, and undos and actions if I should need those. So set this up like this. Also, I like to go to Window, uh, Workspace, no, Arrange, New Window for this. So we have two windows now, it's the exact same thing. Now it's not a new document, it's not duplicating the document, it's just a new window for the same document. So if you grab the tab the, and you drag this over to the side and see where the UI lines up blue, it's going to put that in there. And I'm going to reduce the size a little bit and if I just get my cursor in between the windows, I'm going to drag this and maybe I'll, uh, I can't drag that any smaller, that is as small as that will go. So and I'm going to turn off rulers for this one and I'll probably turn off rulers for that as well. Click on that. So this allows us to see what we're working on at the, at the size it's closer to how we're going to be viewing it. So what I like to do when I'm, you know, when we're, we're painting is zoom in real tight so we can get a good view of the, uh, of the sort of detailed, you know, nooks and crannies we can get in nice and tight with a small brush. But oftentimes we don't get a good bird's eye view of what we're creating so creating a second window helps us helps us you know keep an eye on the big picture as it were while kind of microscoping into a detailed area that we're working on so next what we're going to do is double click the background layer and i'm going to call this black and set it to multiply and then lock it <coughs> we're never going to be painting or modifying or working on this this line art uh, if a line artist has provided you with some work or if you're creating it yourself you want to preserve that line art and keep it um, keep the integrity of it so we we lock that and once it's set to multiply it means it's basically going to draw black over whatever we whatever we, we create I'm going to create a new layer and drag that underneath black and now any color that we paint on this layer will be effectively under the black so you'll see how that works as we as we get into this so i'm going to use the um wacom brush and i'm going to pick a somewhat flesh tone now it doesn't have to be exact because again everything's going to be isolated in some layer and it's digital so we can change anything at a later date i mean it, i will cover this in another another topic i want to just get to the sort of cliff notes version of this for now but it is possible to do everything in grayscale and i've seen artists do everything in grayscale and color it, colorize it after the tonal information has been put in I don't necessarily like to work like that, but it's definitely um, speaks to the always um, the always editable nature of digital art. So um, I've got a somewhat fleshy tone. Flesh is really hard to uh, to get. You got to it's, it's a really particular color it's pinks and oranges and reds and yellows it's, it's get, getting a fine balance between that but we can always like i said come back and color correct it after the fact so i'm gonna get a brush size now obviously they've got the lettering that goes over the you know that goes over the the face but don't worry about that um <coughs> just imagine that the whatever we're painting sort of goes behind it so 
I'm going to start by... Okay, let's make sure my brush... Let's see. So, let's harden is 100%. That's uh, good. Uh, opacity, make sure that's 100%. Everything else is smoothing. I think that's okay. So, now I'm just going to paint, keeping inside of the black as much as possible. When you get to tight corners like this, you can either use the, like, the square bracket tool to make a smaller brush and get in here. But what I like to do, again, it's all about being efficient and getting in and getting out and getting the job done. So what I like to do is keep the same size brush and then just kind of block in that color. If I get to here and need to go over, that's fine. I can go up and go over. Now I can pick the eraser tool and I can just go back and whoosh, that's gone. Make sure I have that. Yep, okay. So now the uh, this area is outlined, which is how I like to work. I like to outline. And rather than just going in and blah, 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 wearing out your Wacom tablet, rather than doing that, if you look, if I turn off the black, what you have is just like a sort of random area that's sort of encircled by, by, by color. So if we hit G to bring up the bucket tool, and we just fill it. One click and it's done. Then I can go back to the brush and then just quickly slam over that. Da -da 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 and it's 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 filled really quickly. And we can kind of touch up any areas that uh, we missed. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to rename this face. It's sometimes I'll work all the same color on one layer. So it might be all the reds, all the blues, you know, whatever. More often than not, I'll isolate it by objects, sky, ground, you know, face, dress, hair type of thing, as it makes more sense to get to. Sometimes if it's like really involved, I might separate that out so I can have the flexibility of modifying the highlights or lowlights or whatever after the fact. Sometimes I might have all highlights and all lowlights or shadows on their own layer so I can then go back and individually manipulate those later. For now, let's just do everything on the face. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush, uh, D, then X to get the default colors, then switch the white to the foreground color. And I'm just going to paint in. And again, I don't have to worry about painting around the black. I'm just painting in this whole area because the black is, the white is basically painting behind the black line art. Just getting this. We've got the highlight in the eye. Make sure we get this little highlight there and any areas and we're just trying to get bring out the intentions of the uh, of the of the line artist and you can see already on the on the on the small size to the the actual sized um, window that that's already looking quite nice the line work is doing some of the shading for us and we've got a little bit of definition still what I like to do is add a little bit of shape I mean, the standards have been raised over the last 10 years or so, especially with, you know, the advent of digital becoming more prevalent in comic art and what whatnot. Um, so where you might have just had flat areas of art, and that's definitely a style that is still often used. But for something like this, you might want to bring out some, you know, some shading and texture and things like that. So what I like to do with the face layer select, if we hit the slash, the question mark key, that locks the transparency so that means now i can paint in broad strokes and it's not going to paint outside of the area that we have just painted so what i like to do is sample the color that i painted and then maybe do 50 percent opacity and actually good shortcut option shift m for multiply we'll now multiply this and then we can do a nice just one big stroke also, what I might do is reduce the hardness a little bit, and then maybe I'll go back and reduce the opacity again. Um, also, now I've established what this multiply does. It, we've established like this darker tone, but we don't want to keep multiplying because then it starts building up and getting too dark and saturated. So if I go back a few steps, what I can do is sample this color now I have the darker flesh tone, and I can reset my brush to Option-Shift-Normal. 
Option Shift N for normal. Now I can go back in with the lighter brush, with the softer brush, and just blend that in a little bit more. As you can see, that's sort of... Now I can go reduce the brush size a little bit, increase the opacity to 100 again, and then just paint in here and the eyebrows. Paint under the hairline a little bit. And we reduce the opacity a little bit so it's very soft and we can then do some blending. We don't have to blend, you can, you know, keep hard areas of colour. I'm going to, in fact, I should have done the white areas last. I'm just going to bring some shadow, her face is in shadow there. And again, I'm going to hit Option Shift M again to multiply a little bit, 50%, and then just build that up a little bit under these areas here. And consulting the the smaller window over here, I can see that that's looking pretty good. I don't want to option shift normal again. I'm going to just add a little. So what I can do now is I've got some low lights established, some shadows. What I think I might do is just sample this color again, and this time I'm going to do Option Shift S for screen, 50% again, and I'm just going to add in a couple of, that's a bit bold, maybe 20%, just add a tiny amount of highlights just above the eyebrows, maybe just a couple of little dots in here. Yeah, we don't need to go overboard, we're not creating works of art, we're just adding some shape and some colour to the um, line artist's artwork. So, that looks pretty good for now. I'm going to go back in and just touch up the, uh, the eyes where I painted over those a bit. And... Do you want the eyes to punch out, even though maybe the eyes would be in shadow a little bit? The artist hasn't illustrated that, and I want to... The eye should be sort of piercing out of that, that, that face there. It looks like quite an intense. So, that's done. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to lock that layer, so we can't mess with it. Next, I'm going to do the hair. So, Command, Option, Shift, N for a new layer. I'm going to... Oops, call that hair. And if you have any questions as I'm going along, um, I'm not actually I'm on my own here, so I don't have anyone checking comments in the stream, but um, definitely ask them in the, the comments of the video and I will get back to them after the uh, after I, I, I finish the stream here. Um, so hair, we thinking, I mean, Blonde, brunette. Actually, she looks like trouble, so I'm thinking redhead. Let's get a nice... Get a nice redhead. Let's find this color. Let's see how that looks. Maybe a little more red. There we go. A bit more saturated. Yeah, she looks like trouble. Let's... So again, I'm going to... Again, where the paint goes behind the, the letter, we're trying to create one constantly outlined shape. So... Now, obviously I'm with the Wacom tablet, which makes it a lot easier to to paint with. I know it's I went a little bit over there. I'm just going to knock that back, toggle back to the eraser tool, back to the brush tool. 
So I'll do that as I go. I'll, if I go over the edges I don't know if you see it, I'll quickly go back and just toggle the eraser tool. Um, if you're with a mouse though, it's a nice little trick and shortcut. If you just click to to, uh, to brush stroke and then hold down the shift key, it's like joining the dots. You just tap, 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 and it will draw a straight line between between each tap. But if I just find a, a, a blank area here, you'll see what I mean. Actually, let's create a new layer. Um, fill that with black, and then let's... So if I just click here and then shift click here and I'm just shift clicking. Well, that's because it's not there. So you can see I can just sort of with a faceted circle where the, the, the circle is not quite fully circular. It's made up of lots of small straight edges. So um, that is a really useful trick whenever you're doing these large areas and you have to whoops and you have to trying to keep a, a smooth line going can be tricky and sometimes you just want to go through it really quick especially where the edge doesn't have to be exact because we've got the black line work defining the edge so we can quite easily have ourselves a little leeway as far as accuracy is concerned and if you see I've got like the edge just slightly under the edge of the of the brush cursor is just slightly under the so let's let's get through this real quick and here I might reduce the brush size slightly. And then bring it back up again using the square bracket keys again. That's a great shortcut to keep handy. She's got quite a lot of hair, so let's um, let's just work on this one section. Otherwise, I'll be here for forever um, trying to outline this hair. Uh, obviously, under normal circumstances, we have lots of time, but I would just want to get the idea of the technique across. So we'll just pick one small section right here. Go back over it again because it's a little thin there. Again, reduce the brush size as we come to the end end of the hair right here. Just brush over it again, make sure it's thick enough. Again, just shift tapping to get this Let's see where does the hair go? Uh, looks like maybe this is her hair because obviously there's the character behind her has her hair and it's trying to decipher the artists, the line artists intention, what they were if it was you, if you were the line artist, obviously then there's no problem, obviously here I'm trying to decipher another artist's work um, okay we'll call that good for now and if I turn off the black layer let's see if we have a nice encapsulated area right let's just I'll put the seam right here now it has to be this area has to be enclosed other I mean if I don't do that you'll see what happens if I hit the bucket key it just fills in everything because it hasn't found a boundary so if I 
just put like a, a boundary there whether it needs to be there uh, whether it's part of the line art or not yes yeah, so her uh, scene would be back here somewhere but just for the sakes of the art now I can just fill in that area again I can go back with a slightly larger brush and just bish bash bosh just fill that in that is a great hair color size a bit smaller again and shift just shift and tap we can be more accurate just with placing these individual taps when holding the shift key than trying to always be perfect with a brush stroke um, no one's judging us on our expertise to get to get where we're going the only thing that's important is the end result doesn't matter how you got there the comic reader is never going to know whether you shift tapped or used a masterful one stroke to paint in the strand of hair no one's going to know all that matters is that you get the get the job done so once again i'm going to hit the question mark slash key to lock the transparency and I can go in and then do some broad tonal strokes so again I'm gonna sample that color reduce the opacity to maybe 20 and then option shift to screen that and make a nice large brush and reduce the hardness quite soft and then just add some light areas on top of the head And then maybe some light area here. Maybe some light area here. Maybe in here. Maybe here. And similarly, option shift M to multiply. Now we're going to darken the hair and make some make some broad shadows just just in here there so got some nice tonal going on let's just go in with a smaller brush and be a bit more surgical we can um, while I have the multiply color I can actually what I'll do is I'll sample that color like I said before re return opacity to 100% return the brush to normal and then just paint in with this dark color Some of these darker areas now again because the opacity is locked up here I can go over the edge and add some without having to be too concerned about the accuracy of the going up against the line that too much maybe there's not too much need for the line work does all the yeah, I don't need that there's nothing wrong with trying something and undoing it there's nothing to say that what we have to do has to be um, used every time so I'll often try something and if I don't like it I'll just undo that or go back and later and, and erase it. Yeah, don't like that too much. The line work again, the line work is the main attraction here. The color is like the supporting act. We're trying to just add an extra flavor to the line artists original intent so just bringing out a little bit of tone and and uh and, and color so um now i'm also going to sample the bright area here 
and add a few highlights. What we can do, if we bring up the uh, brush palette, turn on shape dynamics and the size jitter we're going to use to fade and let's use, let's try maybe 60 pixels for this and you can see it will taper the brush stroke so you get some nice, nice fades we we'll turn that off. Let's see what the uh, yeah. Let's get a highlight in here. So that hair is looking quite nice. It's got some shape and it's got some shine to it. Um, I might just add a bit more, oops, don't like that. Just adding a little detail in there. Okay, I think that's about good. So we've got the face, we've got the hair. What time do we have? Okay, let's very quickly work on the dress. Just because... Well, I'm going to very quickly just block in the neck. Actually, I might put that on the face. Let me just put that on the face. Um, let's see what we've got. I'm going to sample this color right here and then just just for a little context I'm not going to work on shading the neck and again I'm not afraid to go over the edges here because sometimes it's easier to oh and I don't need to do I always do that. Forget to turn the fade off because then now your brushes, brush strokes keep fading out and you don't know why. So I'm just going to quickly block that in, go back in with the eraser tool and clean up any edges I may have been a bit sloppy with, especially in the tight areas where it's easier to overshoot and erase. So let's take a look at the dress real quick. Here's Let's move that to the to the bottom of the stack. And this is just really as a guide to help us see where we're painting, especially when we're painting a light color and we've got a white background. It's hard to see where we're going. So I'm going to um, select a white with a slight bluey gray to it and I'm just going to follow the line art again again where it interacts with the hair. There's a lot of sort of um, using best judgment and the hair is obviously going to be a layer. Don't worry about painting behind the layer. Like what's happening here under the armpit, we're just using our best judgment. Um, when it's at the small size here, you don't really notice it anyway. So it's easy to get kind of sucked into the minutiae of details and get 
kind of sidetracked trying to adhere to that but bear in mind that when it's at print or reading size it's not really going to have that much effect one tiny three pixel area again here I'm going to paint over the area and then oops ah there we go so prime example let's go back and start that again let's lock this layer go back onto dress whoops try that again see if i can spell there we go and actually paint with the brush tool and not with the eraser tool so let's there now I can lock that. Now I go back to dress. Now I'll return to the bluey grey. Now I've got the brush. All right, very good. Let's try that again. Let's quickly blow through this. Again, I'm going kind of quick here. I'm not taking uh, the care I might normally do just to try and be quick with the lesson running. A little long. Again, just shift clicking. Let's erase that. Try that again. Where does the dress go? down here again consulting the the smaller image window because it's easy to get lost in the weeds when you're zoomed this far in and seeing where exactly you uh, we're going so okay Let's just gloss over this bit, this little detail. I'm not sure if that's like a ribbon or something that's, that's there. Let's just actually, let's just fudge this bit in real quick. Not too concerned with these little detail bits. I want to get to the, the main dress. That's her leg. I'm going to just bypass a lot of this just to keep going let's see Again, we're going to go behind the hair, and we're not too concerned about how that works out. Uh, here's her arm, so let's just paint up against her arm, and the hair will go behind it, so we can kind of be a bit loosey-goosey with our line work here, because... Oops. Getting a bit sloppy in my haste. Let's just get this... Let's clean up that a little bit. Okay, so again, if we turn off the black, we can see... Let's fill in that area. You notice I was still able to paint in the small area because I can see what I'm doing a little better. Now I can switch back to this window, get a slightly larger brush, and then just bish bash bosh around around this yeah
So again, very quickly, that <clears throat> looks doesn't look much, looks kind of odd. But then, of course, once we add the line work back in and other elements, again, we'll get painted in. So um, let's add some broad tonal, this nice soft brush. We're going to make it a little bit larger. That's way too large. Whoops. There we go. Um, again, I'm going to option shift multiply. Let's see how dark that is. Okay, that's not bad. Maybe you'd make that about 80%. Um, going to lock the transparency again and then just block in some tonal areas. I might reduce the size for this. Actually, what I'm going to do again, sample that color, return it to normal, zero opacity, maybe And with opacity at 10% and the brush set to multiply, I can start to build up some darker areas of color, darker areas of tone. I've got, again, a slightly bluey gray. I'm going to, again, sample that color, return the brush to normal, and maybe just 50%. Again, let's go back to the brush palette, turn the jitter to fade, maybe like a hundred pixels. Let's close that again. And we can add some So you get that nice sort of taper. starting outside of the area so that we get a nice sort of fat stroke that then tapers out and this dark area in the middle if it's a little heavy-handed we can go back into that and soften it a little bit Even with the taper on still, we can... Once again, let's also option shift S for screen. We can add some subtle highlights to this Let's see. 
this looks a little heavy handed in here let's knock this dark area back just a little bit just knocking back these dark areas just a tad the line work kind of does again a lot of the heavy lifting so don't need to sometimes it's easy to overdo it so it's easy just to go back and anyway that's just the general idea of using the fade tool and some some subtle differences in the tone between the light and dark just to help describe the shape of the the uh the fabric most of which like i said has been done with the with the uh with the line work and we're just adding some general broad strokes to to help to help uh add a little extra dimension to it i would probably go back in here and make this area quite dark under the hair and behind the arms so again i've got a nice big brush and i'm just going back and forth over the over the area Oops. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that for now. We can close this window because it's the same window it's not a different document as i said um i'm going to finish this off and maybe we'll take a look there's obviously a lot of detail in there and a lot of different characters a lot of different you know elements to be colored in um might be a good idea to just go in and block out some areas of color like block in the block in this character this character just their skin tone and the whatever clothes they're wearing speaking of skin tone let's look at the face real quick um it's looking a little gray and a little orange so we can always like i mentioned at the very beginning if i bring up the hue saturation i can bring up the saturation a bit more make it a bit lighter make it a bit more peachy We take a look at the difference between that. That's much, that's much nicer. Same goes for the hair. I can take the hair if we didn't like the red head, or say we have an art director or something that doesn't like the, doesn't like the red head. Let's, you know, let's change that to purple hair, for example. You know, that's the beauty of what we're doing. Having having our elements isolated on layers, um, it's all digital, so it can all be, you know, messed with at a later date. So. The dress the dress is just grayscale what if we didn't want her dress to be white or um, we want the dress to be a we can make it a lot brighter white and just this then the shading is a a lot more subtle the groundwork has been done we've fleshed out our areas of highlight and shadow but now we can knock them back a little bit and make that dress you know really white or conversely we can make it really gray we can make it a color we can colorize it and then maybe she's wearing a gold dress or something so this is where the idea of painting grayscale and then colorizing later um, is illustrated we can then go back and color correct things later on um, so let's cancel out of that for now um maybe we'll carry this on on another lesson maybe i'll go back and work on some uh, rest of the characters maybe we'll look at the car or look at the background some other elements and other techniques for doing uh, some stuff like that but the general idea line work is at the top of the stack and it's set to multiply you never mess with it you're just creating separate layers for your different elements different colors um different objects <coughs> and just go through and and uh, meticulously go through and paint them. Hope you found this. 
hope you found this lesson enjoyable hope you learned something uh, if not have you had fun um, if not come back tomorrow I'll be doing something completely different it could be animation it could be music I'll probably do some music and try and mix it up visual arts musical arts and uh, you know alternate between those so maybe tomorrow I'll um, play with some more micro setups in um, in, uh, in, in music on the computer all right have fun uh, explore your creativity uh, don't be shy or embarrassed or afraid to explore and make mistakes make a mess throw it away uh, don't be precious this is just about exploring and playing um, and then the tips we learn the techniques we learn and develop from doing that we can then take into when we want to create our masterpiece um, all right have fun and until next time be creative thanks for watching bye